We're going to go over 10 common GED science questions. Now, the first one, you could be asked to find the median of a data set, and that's just the middle number. But you don't want to find it right away because that would tell us 253, but that's not correct because you'll have to put them in order first. So once you line them up smallest to biggest, then just find the one that's in the middle, and that is your median right there. Often they'll ask you to find the mean for a data set, but that's just the average. So you could just add these all together, 47.5, and divide by how many you have. And let's go ahead and use the calculator. And this is the one that you'll use on the test here. And that'll give us 11.875, but just rounding it 11.9. So A, that is the mean density here. If you're asked to find the carrying capacity, it's just where the graph levels out. Or in other words, where the population stabilizes. So in this case, E, that's the point where that happens. So that is the carrying capacity. And the number of marmots is just going to maintain at a steady level there. The independent variable in an experiment is always the one that you control and you change. Now in this example, the only thing we're actually changing is the amount of grounds that we use. Because we're using the same amount of water each time, we're brewing the coffee the same amount of time, and then we're tasting it. But the only thing we actually changed was the quantity of grounds, so that makes that the independent variable here. For this problem, we're finding the probability that a collision happens on a rocky planet. But to do a probability, you're just going to set up a fraction. And then you want to count the things that you're interested in, all of the collisions that happened on rocky planets. And they mention those are just the first four planets listed here. And adding those, we get 216, so we'll put that up top. And then we want to divide it by the total, in this case, 815 collisions. And then we're going to type this into the calculator, because this will give us a nice percent here. So we'll do the fraction button, 216, divided by 815. And then just use the button right above Enter. And same thing as 26.5%, or rounding it, 27% here. Here we're given a chemical reaction, and we're asked, what are the products in this reaction? Well, the things on the left side are called the reactants, the things on the right side, the products. So in this case, we're just looking for the things on the right side, and A has them, so those are the products here. So as long as you know the terminology, you're good there. A paleontologist found eight fossils in a dig. She wants to study three of them more in depth. In how many ways can she choose three from the eight that she found? So she has eight fossils, but she wants to choose just three of them. You could actually plug this into the calculator, and this is what you'll type in. You're going to start with eight things, and then this button's going to choose three of them. So let's see that. Okay, eight. And then this is the probability button. Just go down to the second one there. And then three. And 56. So there's 56 ways to just choose three of those. And just as an example, you could choose number one, two, and three, one, two, four, two, five, and six, and keep going. And all of the ways that you could choose those would add up to 56. When you're given a genetics problem, you'll always want to find out about the parents first. Here we have heterozygous parents. That just means a combination of one capital letter, one lowercase. And then you want to make a Punnett square. You'll just put one of the parents across the top, and then both of them have that trait. So the other one, same thing there. Then you're going to combine them to see what each of their four kids looks like. But you're just going to combine the letters, so big R, big R right there. And then big R, little r, big R, little r, and two little ones there. Here we're finding what is the probability the offspring have a spotted coat. But just find out what does the capital letter represent. Because if the kid has that, it's going to have that trait. So three of these are going to have a spotted coat, capital R, and that's three out of four, or 75% of them. So only the one, or 25%, will have a black coat. 
When you're given an equation, just try to plug in anything you can. Now here we're given eight newtons of force, but that's just F right there, so we'll put eight. And if the dog performs 72 joules of work, that's W, so put that there. Then we wanna find how far the dog moved the sled, but that's just D right there. In other words, what could we multiply by eight to get 72? So D has to be nine, because that'll multiply correctly to eight to get us to 72. One last example here. What is the dependent variable in this experiment? But you can use a little cheat because if they give you a graph, you can always make these letters. The bottom, you can turn it into an I, the left side, a D. So the dependent variable is always gonna be on this axis. In other words, it's the distance that the rubber band goes here. And the reason that's the dependent variable is the distance depends on the angle that you shoot the rubber band. So distance traveled, that's our dependent variable, and that's it. If this was helpful for you, here's a video with more GED science questions for you. Let me know what other questions you run into. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles.